Hey, how you guys doing? So this is Neil from PerfectSunLED.com. I'm going to be showing you guys the lineup that I use, the nutrients that I've been using lately. Uh, last several grows now, I think three grows at least. Um, and I really like it a lot. And I'm going to explain, one, why I like it, how it saves me money. But the main thing I'm going to explain first is exactly um, how, I, how I measure it, you know, how, how I use it. That is the measurements that I use. Um, I haven't made an actual table on the website yet. I do apologize for that. Um, I just haven't taken the time to actually measure it per gallon. So um, it's really easy to do. I'll explain how to do that. But uh, you don't, all you need to know is what the EC is. And the EC translates to, to PPMs very easily. If you don't have an EC meter, you have just a PPM meter. Uh, I highly recommend getting one that does EC though, because that's like universal. Anyway, so I'll be explaining the, the measurements. I'll explain what exactly I use. And that's, that's it right there. That's the whole grow right there. That's all you well, though, I guess, you know, that's just the, the A and B bloom. I didn't feel like grabbing the A and B, the A and B uh, grow as well, but you need that as well for the veg stage. Um, some tips and tricks that I, that I have that makes my plants grow bigger, like bigger root systems, things like that in the beginning um, with, with, with this nutrient lineup and with any nutrient lineup, really. And uh, yeah, so that's that. And I'll be coming in closer in just a second, so you won't be able to see the bottles. I'll have to, I'll have to lift each one up. But yes, yeah, so that's basically what uh, I'll be doing. And then also, I'm going to be explaining why I grow with this with this with lineup, why I like it, and how it actually saves me lots of money in the long run. It's initially a little bit more expensive startup than if you get the smaller bottles, not so bad. Um, you, then, then you might be kind of like the startup isn't really that bad at all. Um, and then I'll, maybe I'll give you like one more, one more secret thing that I use sometimes. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and zoom in now and finish up this video here. All right. So first off is the actual, let's go ahead and get this all situated here. Uh, there we go. Cool. Cool. All right. So the first thing is, is what are my measurements? So my measurements are gold. They go like this and I'll explain what each of these are and what they do. And then I'll explain why I use them. CalMag Plus by, Botan by Botanicare. Um, I highly recommend using the CalMag Plus because having that little bit of extra nitrogen in there really does balance this thing out. It has a couple other things in there that, that balance out. So it's not just CalMag. Um, I've been using this for a long time. I really like the, uh, the effects of it. Some people use Cali Magic. You know, there's different brands out there if you want to try it. But this is what I like. Uh, you know, it works great for me. So one milliliter per gallon. Now that's if I'm using my well water. My well water runs about 140 to 150 ppm. Um, I think that comes out to, what is that, 0.2 EC or something like that. Uh, you just divide it by 500. Um, but anyway, so uh, that's that's how I do that. Now, if I'm using RO water, which is it should be zero ppm, uh, I'm using my, if I'm using my RO filter, this, this last grow, I actually didn't use my RO filter. And the main reason why I didn't use my RO filter with this last grow is because of laziness. But anyway, that's a whole other story. I just didn't feel like having to get a timer because anyway, I always forget and then it, it, it starts overflowing and it's just a pain in the butt because um, I fill up my 50 gallon drum. And if I let it sit overnight and forget about it when I wake up and wake up and I'll go check it and turn it off, then it's like overflowing and that's not good. Um, so if I you know set a timer to it, I get a hose timer and set the timer on the hose, then I'll know exactly, you know, okay, set, to, set it to 16 hours, however long it takes to fill up, you don't have to figure that out. And I just thought I'd do that. So I'm like, you know what, water is good enough, I'm just gonna do that. So my well water has a lot of CalMag in it, so that's why I go ahead and just use one milliliter per gallon of the CalMag Plus. Let me go ahead and fix this a little bit because it just seems like it's crooked to me. This is, by the way, my new, my new fight set. If you watch my latest video, it's really cool. Um, it shows uh, shows a really slick combo you can use in, in a street fight and how, how to adapt it for a street fight versus how to adapt it for boxing. So it goes into both applications. It's really, really cool. But yeah, and also if you haven't checked out my, my new trailer yet, with um, with the big guy, that's freaking awesome. Just to show that it works, you know, he's like way bigger than me, and I can throw him around and get out of all the moves, all that stuff. But anyway, for those that are interested in my my uh, street fighting tips, it's called Street Jitsu: The Art of Street Fighting. And if you just click on my name, GrowPotCheaply.com, I know I'm advertising my own channels. That's crazy, right? So you click on GrowPotCheaply, and then on the right hand side there, it shows you my other channels. I also have a new channel if you haven't seen it yet. Um, I changed out of the channel and, I, and now it's uh, Nomicism. So if you're interested in my philosophy and my views and all that kind of stuff, nomicism.com. And that's uh, N A M I C I S M, nomicism.com. And yeah, so, and that they also that uh, I have a YouTube channel for that particularly, and that goes all into my philosophy and my beliefs about, about the world. I have a theory of everything and, and all kinds of cool stuff. So for those that are interested in that, it's really cool. 
All right, now next is how I use the A and B. So this is the trick that a lot of people don't know, is you don't have to use all those root accelerators and all that kind of stuff. Now, they, they do work. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I did it back and forth enough times now that I can tell you that conclusively that the root accelerators do work, but they're very, very expensive and unnecessary. <clears throat> what I've been doing recently, getting the same results, um, and sometimes I'll still use the root accelerators, just go back and forth just to see you know, which, one's, which one's making a better result. But what I do, my secret weapon, for the first 10 days, I water with bloom instead of grow. Uh, now what I mean by the first 10 days is if, if it's from seedling, I mean if you use my method, which is on my website, the whole free course there on the Perfect Sun, perfectsunled.com. I have the uh, free course right there. Click on that and it goes through everything. Now, if you look at how I germinate my seeds and then what I do is I put in the paper towel. When I, when I open them up about two days later, if I have them in the right temperature, about eight degrees in a, in a box is how I usually do it with a little heater in there. Um, fan blowing out, kind of like it's like a little homemade dehydrator box that I showed you guys before. But anyway, so what I do is I take it and once it has a tap root about that long, right? So it needs to have a tap root and it has to have uh, some fuzzies on it, right? Then I take the rock one and break it in half and I set it inside there. Obviously the rock wool is preset and conditioned and wet and I show you how to do that in all the course. Then I place that and I put a little hole and I place that inside the cocoa and make sure it has enough pressure to keep the two halves together. Um, if you need to, you can use a rubber band. I've done that and it works fine. It hasn't messed up the grow or anything. All right, so that's that. Um, now, if it's a clone, it has to be after you've already cloned it and it's got some roots on it. So that's day one, right? So that so either when you take it out of the paper towel, that's day one, or you know, that's a seedling, or the clone has roots on it and you're taking it out, out of its whatever how root prop your propagation system. Um, let's, say, let's say you start to get roots coming out of your little um, rock wool cube and now you transfer to a bigger rock wool cube. And then, or, or you're just gonna transfer it to cocoa, whatever. Once you transfer it to the plot and you start watering it, that's day one. Boom, A and B by cycle flower. Equal parts, you always use equal parts of these two things. Now sometimes, if I wanna add just a little bit of, uh, that little, little trick I do, and I probably should save all this for my book, but um, I use a little bit more B than A to get a little bit higher, um, like PK, PK levels. And that's during like, you know, uh, if I don't want to use the potash. And I'm going to explain why I use their Psychoflower potash versus some other PK booster or their, even their PK booster because this isn't actually their PK booster. They don't, they don't sell it as that. Right, so equal parts of A and B, grow and bloom. So if you're using, you know, let's say 200 milliliters or 150 milliliters of A, using 150 milliliters of B, that would be for a 50 gallon drum. Now, I use a much lower PPM ratio with this stuff than with Fl than Floronova. And the reason why is it's way more uh, chelated. I think that's how you say the word. Very, It's very, very tiny. Um, and it's mostly amino acids. So like there's like 40% less salts in this stuff. So it takes a lot longer to get any sort of salt buildup, which is awesome. Great for drip systems. Great for your plants, period. Um, so with uh, the, the exact ratios, I'm just going to tell you what I do with this stuff, like what ultimately, like how, how I go about it and when I use the potash. Now the potash, what's different is that NPK is 0, 0.46. Notice that the potassium, that is the K, is higher than the P, which is the phosphorus. Most PK boosters have a higher phosphorus than potassium. I've used both back and forth they, and, and, and believe me, like things like Monster, Monster Bloom and PK boosters like that work fantastic. It's not like they don't work. But what I've noticed about using the ones that have a higher potassium level than phosphorus level, like especially the Psycho, um, Psycho Flowers Potash, and this is what their bottles look like, just so you know. You can buy them online. So I get mine on Amazon. And you can also buy a thing from their official website, I think. I'm not sure, I can't remember if they have. I think they might have some distribution thing where you can't actually buy it from their actual website. but. Um, definitely you can buy it through Amazon. That's how I got these ones and uh, just make sure it has the Australian seal on there. Make sure you're getting the right stuff because, you know, just make sure it's shipping from like United States or Australia. Because um, if it's not, then you might be getting something that's not the legitimate product. And anyway, so um, this stuff works great. What, what I've noticed is that it gives me the same big flower development that regular PK boosters do, but it makes my buds denser and that's why I prefer it. You might wonder what this little bottle back here was in the beginning of the video. This is just 
their silica. Now you can use any brand of silica, it really doesn't matter. I just happen to, just they happen to have this at my shop at the time, so I'm like, I'll just, I'll try their silica. What I use silica for is actually a pH up. And this is a trick I learned some years back, is that silica is basically a pH up, but better because it actually benefits your plants. Now, the last thing I need that I didn't put out here is a pH down. And I'll explain how I, how I, how I water and how I do my pH down with this nutrient line. So once you have the one or two milliliters of this per gallon, depending whether or not you're using your tap water or, and remember your, your tap water or well water has to be 150 or below. If it's higher than that, use an RO filter, use RO water. RO filters will save you tons of money in the long run, most likely. I guess it depends on your water bill and stuff like that, but whether I got a well, well or tap water and how much you pay for, how much water you use and, and whatnot, but uh, it should save you money in the long run. And it's a very low investment to get a, a, a cheap, the cheaper RO filters that just hook up to a hose. Anyway, so if you're using water that has about 150 ppm or so, then just use one milliliter of this because it means your water, whether it's tap water or well water, is going to already have CalMag in it. I probably should look at the little camera lens. I always want to look at myself because make sure I'm not blurring out and stuff. But yeah, so that's how you do that. Um, this stuff, you don't need nearly as, okay, the, the cow mag that's available in the Psychoflower A and B Grow and Bloom is so efficient that you don't need nearly as much um, even when growing in pure cocoa. And that's one thing I noticed, like right away I started noticing that. Um, so again, one milliliter per gallon if you're using tap water or well water, that's around 150 ppm or you know between like 70 to 150 ppm. If your well water is like lower than that. If you're going lower than 70 ppm, then go ahead and use two milliliters of this. Um, if you're using RO water, use two milliliters of this. That's the, the CalMag Plus. All right, then um, the rest of it is all about the A and B, that's it. Because you're only gonna use the potassium a few times. I'm gonna tell you about, I'm gonna tell you about those times, so you're gonna use that throughout the grow. I'm not gonna use this only for pH up when I absolutely need it, like for, for whatever reason. What I've noticed is that with my water and stuff, I never have to use it because this always brings it to the perfect levels. If anything, I always have to use pH down. Um, whereas with the Floranova, I sometimes have to use the pH up a lot. But sometimes I will throw this in there um, on purpose. I'll, I'll purposely pH down to like 5.3 and then throw this in there until it's 5.5. That's only when I very, very first fill up my, my reservoir tank. After that, I pH it every day to 5.8. I let it rise up and then, you know, sometime you know, when I go to water or I go to check on my plants, if it's on drip system, then that's when I go ahead and pH it down to, to 5.8. All right, so uh, that's that, pretty, it's pretty simple. So the next thing is, is the different, the different stages of the plant's life. And if you know the EC value, then, then, that, then you'll know exactly how much you have to put in there. Now, I haven't actually done the things where I've taken a gallon of water and put the, the exact ratios in there. That's why I don't have a, a chart up yet on the website for the Psychofly nutrients, but you can make your own chart, it's very easy. So if you wanna, if you wanna do that, then that's great, it's really easy to do. I just go by the EC, I don't, I don't, I don't ever use a chart, so. Um, but the EC is gonna give you the chart. In other words, once I take the EC value, for example, uh, once they have roots on them, or once the clones have roots on them, like I said, or once the seedling has roots on them, I feed them with 300 ppm. Divide 300 by 500, Type in 300 first, hit the vitamin calculator, then hit 500, and that will give me an EC value of 0.4, I believe. Or is it 0.6? No, 0.6, sorry. 200 would be 0.4. So 0.6. So 0.6 EC is how much I feed my, my seedling or day one of, of watering is 0.6. I know that sounds high and it sounds crazy, but I've been doing it for years, and you guys see the results I get. Now, again, remember, in that first 10 days of watering by hand, Bam, I use 300 ppms of bloom. And that sounds crazy. You would think you have to use veg, right, for those first 10 days, but no, I use bloom. Now, if you do use grow, then make sure to use a root accelerator. It does work, it gives you bigger root systems. I've done it back and forth with and without, and I can tell you now, definitely it does work. But this gives you pretty much the exact same results, and it's much cheaper because you don't have to buy those root accelerators, and it's one less product you have to use. And I'm all about that. I'm all about saving money. I'm all, I'm all about efficiency, using less products uh, to get the same results. So it gives me awesome growth explosion and big, big fat, you know, plants. You saw how big those Hubba Bubba smell scopes were. And uh, so it's crazy. And those would have got so much bigger if I would have been able to put them underneath light properly and train them all out. But I didn't have enough room. Okay, so 
that's for the first stage. So all I'm using is these three products for the first stage and, and then pH down, bam, if I need it. Um, most likely you probably won't need it. You might even need a little bit of pH. Um, actually, it probably should be pretty even. You might, little, might need a little bit of pH down, just depending on what your water is, your, your water's pH. Everyone's water's pH is different. Make sure to check the pH every single time with a good pH pen. I personally use the Blue Labs combo meter that has the TDS meter, which, which can test for your um, EC, your PPM times 500, PPM times 700. Most people's, if you don't have an EC meter and it only tells you the TDS or the PPMs, most likely it's times 500 model. It's, it's rare to get a 700 model. So um, you just times it by 500 to get, or, or if you want to get the EC, then you take your PPM and then divide it by 500. So if you got a, PPP, a PPM of 900 and you divide that by 500, you're gonna get 1.8 EC, right? And that's what you do for like, full, like Floronova um, line. But I usually like to use like 1.6. I figure less is more usually in that case. Sometimes I'll bump up to 1.8 for just a couple times, but if I'm not using a PK producer. Anyway, that being said, so that's that. So that's for the first 10 days. Now, once I transfer after the first 10 days, I still keep using 300 PPM. So I keep using that 0.6 ratio with grow until they kind of start looking a lighter green. Once they start looking a lighter green, then I bump up to 0.8. That comes to, I think, uh, 0.8, I'm not sure, 0.8, EC, 0.8 EC, just do 0.8 times 500. And I think that comes out to 500. No, no, no 1, 0.1 would be 500. It comes out to 400, I think, or something. I'm not, I can't remember, sorry. Um, I think it's 400 PPM. I've been doing EC now for a while, so that's what my brain's used to. So anyway, um, then, as I said, then I, then I start doing the, uh, the 0.6, uh, or excuse me, the 0.8, the 0.8 EC once they start looking lighter green. So start out with the 0.6 and then I go 0.8. Now, if you want, you can start with 0.4. If you want to be super careful, make sure your plants are too sensitive, whatever, and just, you know, that, that's fine. I can understand that reluctancy to want to feed them from day one. It seems crazy, but as long as you have enough light, that's super important. I forgot to mention that, sorry. If you don't have enough light hitting your plants when they're babies and you pump and you hit them with 0.6, you're probably going to fry them. The more light they have, the more nutrients they can eat. The less light, the less nutrients. So if you're using like CFLs, forget about it. You know, you're using T5s, forget about it. You know, don't feed them 0.6, like feed them like 0.2 or something. Um, anyway, so then, um, like I said, once they start looking lighter green in the vegging stage, um, then I'll not, not just, just start lighting. They, you know, I don't want I don't want a super dark green color, but I don't want a really light green color either. I want just a nice looking green plant. And it's hard to say what that green looks like, but um, it, see, it comes with practice. You just don't want something that looks like super dark green. Uh, you don't want something that looks really light green. You, know, you don't want to even, if it starts looking so light green, it's kind of looking yellow, it's way too light green. It means you need to bump up your, your EC. So I let it just kind of just get a little bit lighter green than what I usually like, and then I'll start giving it the 0.8 EC during veg. And that would be the, uh, I believe that's 400 ppm. I do that for the rest of its grow. Now, if it continue, if they're really hungry plants and they start looking lighter green, even at, even after a week or so of the 0.8, then I'll knock it up to, to 1.0. That usually will do the trick with this nutrient line. It's so efficient because it's, like I said, mostly amino acids and uh, very, very chelated, very, very tiny. I think that's how you say that word. Or chelated or chelated. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Don't really care how it's pronounced, but uh, if you want to correct me, you can. All right, so then when I go to flower, I keep that EC, whatever it was, whatever I left off at, at in veg, I keep that the same. Oh, by the way, if I forgot to say, I switch back to grow after 10 days, obviously. So 10 days of bloom of A and B, and then I switch to grow. And grow is also equal parts. So if you're doing two milliliters of, of grow A, then it's two milliliters of B as well. So it's always equal amounts with cycle flower, which is really cool, makes it very easy to do and remember. Um, now, once I uh, switch over to from grow back to bloom, and when that when it, when do I do that? Depends on what I'm doing. If I'm doing regulars, I just I'm not regulars. I should say photos. When I'm doing photo periods, once I switch to twelve twelve, I right away smack them with a little bit of a little bit of this right here, and um, I, I follow the instructions on the bottle. So whatever the bottle says, that's how much I use, and then I usually use a little bit less of this of the AMB bloom. So if I, you know, I'll, so let's say I left off with, with uh, grow 
at 0.8 EC, and that would be again, um, I believe 400 ppm. Let's say that's what I left off with. Then I go ahead, remember I'm watering every single day. I feed every single day. I'm feeding and watering every single day to run off. That's super important when I'm using these numbers because if you're not doing that, then you're using way too low of nutrients, right? Uh, the reason why it's lower, and, and this is way lower than normal too because the stuff is so efficient. That's why it actually ends up saving you money. Besides, this right here isn't a gallon. This is more than a gallon. This is actually 1.32 gallons. So between the two, you're getting like 2.64 gallons. So you're getting more than two and a half gallons for these two bottles. And if you look at the price online after shipping, it actually ends up costing you around the same as with General Hydroponics, a gallon of Floronova. So it pretty much runs the same, but it lasts longer because you end up using less of it because you don't have to put, you know, 1.6, you know, EC during, during, uh, during flower. Okay, so I stop off and say I'm, a, I'm at 0.8 with the grow. I'm switching over to flower. So if they're photos, the second I go to 12-12, bam, that's when I hit them with the 0.8 EC of the bloom. Now I'll do that for like usually, um, and I'll usually just add a little bit of this right here, like half of what's recommended um, for that first time. So hit them with just a little bit of PK booster. And then um, after, after, I'm oh, sorry, the puppy was like distracting me a little bit. I thought she was like, oh, there was she was right here. I like, forgot that she was right here. Anyway, so anyway, um, then, then once I'm in the flower, that's when I just hit them with 0.8 of, of this stuff. Now I do that for about a week to two weeks, usually just one drum full. Um, and then I'll go up two point or 1.0. You gotta be careful though. Maybe even go two weeks at 0.8 or whatever you left off with. If the plants are really hungry and they actually wanted 1.0 and they weren't getting too dark green during, during veg, then still I would drop down to 0.8 at first with the, with the, with the uh, bloom because it is a different, it's a different change of, of values of the MPK values and other things, uh, even micros. So go to 0.8 um, for the first two weeks and then jump up to 1.0. And then maybe even 1.1 or 1.2, depending on the plants. You have to kind of read your plants and see if, if, if they're starting to get lighter, lighter green with that 1.0, maybe bump to 1.1, 1.2. Uh, just don't go too overboard. Remember, just you're watering every single day, so you're gonna see, you're gonna see reactions pretty quickly. Um, now, then that's pretty much what, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what I do for the entire bloom, is it, everything. And this is still the same. This remains the same throughout the entire grow. And then this remains the same now throughout the entire grow until the very, very end. At the very, very end, I taper this off. Now, again, remember when I first fill up my reservoir, so my reservoir goes down almost empty. I let it get down to like that much left for the pump. The pump isn't really pumping anymore. I just refill back. I don't drain that out. I leave that in there because it's clean. I, I got kids all light proof. And so then I go ahead and I fill that up. I, I do that for a whole grow. And I don't, I don't clean that drum until I'm done with the whole grow. And then I take the drum out and clean it. Um, I get my drums at, uh, I believe, Wilco, that's right. So I got my drums at Wilco. And uh, anyway, so they're like 40 bucks a piece, something like that. I like the drums better than the that the other things are cheaper and they're more sturdy. And I, I like them better than the flexi tanks now. So that's what I use. And that, you know, I just, I just set the lid on top and have the pumps go inside and they just come up and out and I don't drill holes or anything like that. I just have them come up and out the top. I, I'm, I'm able to fill them up higher because of that as well. Um, if you want to know about my drip system, definitely watch my drip system. Type in drip system in my channel, click on my username. After click on my username at the bottom there about right next to the about on, on my channel. On the next about click on the little icon the little search icon and then just type in drip system and it should show you my new drip system that i that i use now all right so the one of the key the key things here um when i get toward the end now that i do is i drop down the ec toward the very end so when i have about two weeks left of flower i drop down my 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 feeding to like back down to 0.4 ec so instead of like cutting off completely like a lot of people do to try to yellow out the leaves um, they just try to cut it out all together. They just, they, just, they just feed them water for like a week or two. I don't do that. I just drop it down to about, about 0 0.6, 0 0.4. I go 0 0.6 and then I go to 0 0.4 for the last week. Um, so basically my drum usually lasts about a week. So I'll fill it up to 0 0.6 and I'll, and then I'll, and I'll do to 0 0.4. And then after that, sometimes I'll give them like three days of just water. 
and then they're nice and clean after that because this, this stuff is super clean. When do I use potash? All right, so potash, I use it usually about, about three times during the grow, during the flowering stage. In the beginning of the flowering stage, when they just have like little white flowers on them, where they actually look like little, little, like little, literally like little white flowers all over, that's when I hit them with the PK booster at the normal recommended dose that's on the bottle. I can't remember what that is, but um, let's see if it says on here, where is that again? Uh, one milliliter to one liter nutrient solution. So that would be, uh, what, four milliliters per gallon, I think. Make sure that's right. One milliliter to one liter. Yeah, so that's basically, sorry, three. I think there's three. How many liters in a gallon? Oh, it's four liters in a gallon, right? I think so. I think a liter is about a quart, about, they're about, that, about that. So, um, But I usually, I usually drop it down to three milliliters uh, for, per gallon just because I don't want to like overdo it. And then, because um, they're getting fed it, they're getting fed the entire drum. So they're getting fed this for an entire week because I put this in there at that ratio. Usually when I do that though, I drop this down a little bit. Although this doesn't, honestly, this doesn't really raise the, P, the, P, the P, uh, PPMs very much at all. So if I'm doing like, I'm at like 1.0 with this stuff and the decal mag, if I'm already at 1.0, if I just add the recommended amount of this to it, even if it's the, you know, literally one milliliter per liter. So let's say, you know, I figure out how many, how many liters are in my entire 50 gallon drum. And uh, I believe that would be 50 times four, 50 gallons times four. Uh, I'm pretty sure that gives you the right amount. And you put that exact amount in there. I think I usually, when I add this though, I think when I do a whole drum, I add like, I want to think it's only a hundred milliliters, either 50 or hundred milliliters to the drum. That's what I usually been, been doing of this. And so that's been giving me really, really great results. And uh, I do that three times. So I mean, when does that work out to you though? That would be, well, 50 would only be one milliliter per gallon, right? One milliliter per gallon. And then two milliliters per gallon would be a hundred. I think sometimes I do 150 actually. Sorry, I take that back. I was, I was just trying to rethink about this last crew I did. And so I think I do 100 to 150 of this. And I think I started doing 150 and I like that a lot. And so it's not quite what it recommends on the thing. It's, it's more like, like I said, one milliliter, I think per, or three milliliters per gallon, I think is what it works out to. Yeah, I take the 50 milliliter drum and I'm doing 150 milliliters. So yeah, that, come, that turns out to three milliliters per gallon, I believe. Anyway, so I hit him, I hit him at that stage with this with the potash. I hit them again when the buds start to look like they're starting to form together, when all those little white flowers start to form into what looks kind of like a, the beginning of a bud. Um, then I hit them again with this, boom. I hit them one more time after all that has clustered together when I got about three weeks left. And, and they all cluster together and they start to look like they're almost like they're done, kind of. They look like they actually look like presentable buds and the hairs are starting to turn a little bit orange and they're getting, they're getting close to being done. You know, you got about three weeks left. That's when I hit them with this one more time. Then after that, that's when I knock it down to the 0.6 and knock it down to 0.4. And then um, finally, if they should be finished at that point. If they're not, I just keep them on 0.4 until they're finished. Um, and then I hit them with just water for a couple days. And that's pretty much it. So um, sometimes if I want to do a flash flush, I do a flash flush, meaning I go and just grab my hose and I just literally water each plant until they're just soaking out. I mean, soaking out. Um, but uh, that sometimes is more of a pain in the butt because I have to vacuum up so much water when I do that. Um, unless you want to take each plant outside and if you have a lot of plants, that could be a pain in the ass. So anyway, um, then just, just feed them with water for like three days. Now that's after they're done. I don't feed them with pure water until they're completely done and only for like a max of three days because you don't want to go too long overboard. Um, and by done, I mean that they're ready to cut down and harvest. Right, so that's that. And again, when you need pH up, I use a silica, pH down. Now I wanna go back to the pH down really quickly, just to make sure this is clear. The very first time when I'm, when I'm filling up my drum, every time I refill my drum back up with water, I pH it to 5.5. Now sometimes 5.6, just to be on the safe side to make sure I'm not going too low. Cause what if your pH meter is a little bit off and it's one point off to where if you're feeding at 5.5, it's actually 5.4, you don't want that bad. So. Usually I'll do 5.6, so I want to, to correct myself there. Um, so I'll pH it to 5.6 the very first time I fill it up. And then um, 
I'll start every day going there and I'll pH it down to 5.8 and I try to make it at the same time every day where I go in there and I check on my plants and boom, pH it down to 5.8. Usually after the third day, it'll, it'll pretty much stay at 5.8. Um, if, if you're using RO water, you might not even have to do it at all. Like once you're there, it's, it stays pretty even um, with, this, with this nutrient line. But with uh, anything that has filters or has buffers in it, like your tap water has buffers in it, that's why it stays at around 7, 7.2 pH, just because it has buffers in it, keep it there. And uh, buffers are basically like other minerals and things. And then and I think I think CalMag, cal, calcium magnesium is actually what helps buffer, buffer it up. Because if you look at lime, and lime uses a buffer to try to keep your pH um, of your soil at around 6.5 or so, even, even if you're watering 7.0 water, um, the, that's organic garden lime. What that does is it's, it's basically looking at ingredients is basically all different forms of calcium and magnesium, calcium carbonate and calcium oxide and so forth, and magnesium oxide, magnesium, you know, all the different types of things. There's three, three different types of magnesium and three different forms, or not types, but where it comes from, its source material. So three, three different forms of calcium, three different forms of magnesium are in the garden lime. That's what all garden lime is. And you can see that it, uh, it balances out the pH. And then you have sulfur and uh, organic sulfur, uh, garden sulfur, which is to make your soil acidic. And so anyway, that's, uh, that's that. So anyway, um, hope this helps and that's how you do it. And now, now quickly, I'll end the video with this. Why do I use this line? Because this line is freaking amazing, that's why. Uh, it saves me tons of money. It sounds crazy like, like okay, look, at when you, when you buy two gallons of this stuff, it pretty much costs you like 80 bucks after shipping. I think it's 30 gallons a bottle, something like that, <clears throat> and then shipping. So it comes out to about, about 80 to, to $90 for, for both of these. The thing is, you're getting more than two gallons. You're actually getting, like I said, 2.6 gallons. On top of that, because it's so efficient, I only have to use up to like 1.2 max during, during flower. That's it, 1.2 EC, that's nothing. That's, um, what, 600 PPM? And then if, if I do the 1.0, which is usually what I do during flower, that's only 500 PPM, versus having to do 1.6 800 ppm of Floronova grow and or Floronova bloom during during flower. So huge difference. So definitely you will notice you go through a lot more gallons of Floronova grow than you will go through through these. So you're spending pretty much the same exact money for, it's about 80 bucks for a gallon of Floronova grow and it's about 80 bucks for, for 2.6 gallons. It costs right around 90 I think after shipping. So but 2.6 gallons. And again, you're using much less of it so it lasts you a lot longer. But you have to keep in mind, you're using equal parts of both. So, um, even you know, even though I'm, but yeah, but but keep the overall the overall amount that I'm using is only 1.0 EC. Um, so overall, it, they both drain slower than one gallon of um, a flow of growth. So it saves you money. Another thing I love about this is it doesn't clog my lines at all, right? So I don't have to like ever clean my lines which is fantastic. I mean, I mean, the only cleaning I do of my lines is when I feed a, feed water for a couple of days at the, end, at the end of the grow. So they go the whole entire grow, right? The whole entire grow, three months of growing or so if I'm doing autos. Oh, that's something I wanted to say about autos. I'm sorry about that, I forgot. There's one thing I do different with autos, and this is a secret to getting big autos. Use grow, well, first off, for, for first 10 days still use the, use the bloom. Then you switch back to grow. Same same ratios. I don't I don't change anything about how much I water with. That is the the same ratios of what I said. The same EC, and I water with that um, with grow until they actually start to have like a lot of white flowers on them. So I and in other words, I feed them grow longer than I would a photo period, and that extends their their cycle. What you'll notice is that they keep going. Like they kind of stay in that stage. But they don't want to fully flower, but they got flowers on them, kind of. But they don't want to fully go into flower yet, and so I do that and let them ex and let them stretch out a little bit bigger, and then I switch over to the bloom, and then give them a PK booster, and then that's what and that is this the potash boom hit with the potash at the uh, at the uh, three milliliters per gallon, and then bam, that's when they start to really stack on the flowers. It just switches them over to that stage, but. That's the way I found you can extend the life of your autos. Now, if you don't want your autos to go a long time, then once you start seeing those, those pre-flowers, start going to bloom. But if you want to get, get them as big as big as possible and extend their life a little bit longer, now, now the downside is, is yeah, you get bigger yields, you get bigger plants, but they do go a little bit longer. 
So instead of going like 75 days, it might go 85 days or longer. Um, I had the one Northern Lights go 135 days before it was finished. So, you know, and that's pretty common with that strain if you, if you use that method. This cute little puppy, she looks like a little fox. Yeah, I call, I call her Pee Wee, but her name is actually Pixie. Pee Wee, full, full bred Pomeranian, costs way too much money. She's a little puppy, she's like a little baby right now. It's crazy, Shaq. It's like, ah, oh, baby puppies are so annoying sometimes. They're awesome and they're also annoying. Just like the baby kittens. All the baby kittens are more, it's more instinctual when it comes to potty training. These things, not easy to potty train. That's what makes them so irritating. But uh, she's awesome. Right, so that's it. So, okay. If you guys have found value in my videos at all, and I know this video probably went longer than it needed to, but again, I drop all those little nugs of knowledge that, you know, I, I could have I could have made it a 10 minute video and that would have explained everything perfectly just fine. Um, maybe um, 10 minutes would have been really fast. I could have just been like, boom, 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 boom. You're like almost like I'm reading a script and then, but you don't get all those in between little bits of knowledge and information that you do when I do it this way. And besides it's free, so I'm not gonna write a script. Sorry guys, I'm <laughs> just not gonna do this for free. You know, if it's, a, if it's a course or something, yeah. Cause that's like almost like, like writing a book, right? So I do plan on writing the book whenever I find time, but I've just been so busy. So if this has helped you at all, do me a favor, um, hit the like button, obviously. Leave a comment, believe it or not, that helps more than anything else when it comes to YouTube um, algorithms. So YouTube hates me, as you guys have seen, they, they demonetize my videos all the time. Uh, they try to not cross promote it. Uh, they just, I don't know, I, I pissed them off or something. So um, the best way to get updates from me, like when I have my best videos, like right now when this video is done, I'm gonna send it out to my newsletter on growpotcheaply.com, is to sign up to the newsletter, not at perfectsignled.com, because at perfectsignled.com, I don't post videos there. I only post when a light's out of stock or in stock, or whatever. Really, I really only when a light's in stock, not when it's out of stock. I put on the site that it's out of stock and then when it's in stock, I put on, I, I send everyone a newsletter, hey, it's back in stock again. Because a lot of people sign up for that very reason to know. But if you want updates on my videos so you don't miss any, then and if YouTube, because sometimes YouTube just, like I said, they don't like me. They only like to tell people that, hey, you know, Growpot Cheaply has a new video out. And so if they don't do that, it's, it's best to sign up to the Growpot Cheaply newsletter. And then that way, when I come out with cool videos, I don't, I don't put every video on there just like every now and again, like only once a month maybe. Um, so if I've made several videos that month, I usually only pick up like one video or two and I, I, I give a newsletter um, and put, put it out there. So, and that's that. So that's pretty much the only time where you get newsletters from me is when I have a, a new cool video that I feel like sharing. Now, another way to super, super like show your appreciation, if, if you are still watching and you wanted to show your appreciation back to me, you guys already know what to do, right? I've said it before. Go to the fight channel man help that fight channel out um, just subscribe to it and comment on videos whenever whenever i post a new video just leave a comment on it even if you're not into the whole fighting thing or self-defense and stopping bullies it's it's for a good cause and it's to help stop bullies and you know it's all free information stuff and it's awesome and so it really does work um, like i said a lot of people don't believe that i've been in been in over 200 street fights and just i know people don't care for this part of it um, but just really quickly for those that, d that do like to get to know me as a person and not just as uh, Tell me what I want to know right now because I just want to know how to grow and that's all I care I just want to use you for your knowledge. I don't want to be your, I don't want to be your YouTube buddy or Care about anything that you do except for I just want to use you for your fucking brain That's it. I just want to suck out information out of your brain get it all for free and do nothing in return That's fine. You know a bunch of selfish people in the world if you're not one of those selfish people then um, and, you, and you just want to just really quickly how I gained all that fighting experience was I ran with the, with the Nortenios when I was in California, when I was younger, and they, they beat me up all the time. So it was, I was always getting jumped by my own gang members. <laughs> and they said it was because they wanted to toughen me up, which I, I believe that's part of what it was. And we're talking full on fist fights, you know, full, full like, you're, like I'm gonna fight with these guys. And um, most of the time it was three on one. Um, and then it would slowly, I got better and better at fighting against three on one. And I would, I can take out one guy really fast cause he wasn't that good of a fighter and he would just quit. And then it'd just be two on one. And I can take out this other guy really fast. And it was just, then it was just me and Roy. And Roy was about 22, 22 at the time. And I was, I was 13 and, and then I was in it until I was, I don't know, 14, 15, no, actually I was 15, I think. Um, 
I can't remember exactly. Anyway, it was, it was it was a little over a year, and they do this every single day. So we hung out every single day, and about at least on average at least five days a week they would just jump me out of nowhere getting off the bus boom jump meal <laughs> and it was all to to toughen me up but it's also because i was the white kid even though i told him hey i'm italian this day. and italians pretty much speak spanish man like you know we're in the same roots and uh <laughs> i don't know how that worked but whatever uh i think they just they just like me yeah, you, you'll see it's it's rare but you'll see white kids and 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 and, 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 and nortenos every once in a while um especially in california won't be very many of them. It's very hard to have a white person be accepted because they're very racist against white people. And uh, anyway, so nonetheless, uh, I think that kind of racism, deep embedded racism, knowing that I look like a white kid, even though I, I convinced them that I was Italian and uh, kind of kind of like them in a way, you know, you know like similar, you know, whatever. Um, they, they don't hate Italians for some reason. So, um, but so because I look like a white kid, I still got picked on all the time. So basically bullied. Um, I had other bullies too, but I talk about that in another video. But anyway, so yeah, that's how I got experience. Think about it. Just do the math. 360 days in a year, if they're jumping me like five times a week, then that easily equals over 200 fights right there just for one year. And I was in it for more than a year. Um, and, and also I got another street fights outside of that, but that was just that. I've, I've already acquired all that experience. And it was against an older guy, much taller guy than me. He was, he weighed more than me. He was taller than me. He was like a lot taller than me. His arm reach was, he was like, okay, if you have, if you haven't seen the uh, videos with my, my new training partner um, on my channel. So he, that's all, that's how much taller Roy was than me. He wasn't, he wasn't as big as that guy. That guy's pretty muscular. Um, Roy was more skinnier, but Roy still weighed a lot more than me. I was 13 at the time, guys. I weighed like 140 or something, 135, 139, 140, somewhere around there. I was, I was pretty, actually, I think it was, I think it was about 140. I was pretty stocky for 13 but still 13 years old and I'm fighting a 23 year old and I, and I started winning most of the time toward the end there. Um, so that's pretty crazy. So I got really good and I started developing my own martial art fighting multiple people uh, cause I had to, I had no choice. You know, I already had some kickboxing experience prior to that. So that was good. And some, and some other um, different martial arts experience that uh, did help me to, to figure out my own ways to fight these, these guys. Um, but like I said, it usually always ended up with just me and Roy. But so, you know, it, it would it would either start with two on one or one on one or I mean, sorry, three on one or two on one. But it would always end up with me and Roy at the end. Like it never ended up with me and Joe or me and Jesse ever, never, ever, ever. They, they always they always just I always took them out fast. And they would just give up. And it was me, me and me and Roy. And we would full on fight, man. Like, I mean, go at it. Blood everywhere. Like it was crazy. I'm surprised. I'm surprised I didn't like lose all my teeth. Um, but I was very smart, keeping my chin down and keeping my hands out, you know, like, and he had some boxing. So uh, it was cool. And, uh, you know, and, and I would kick and stuff and they would be like, don't kick you, no kicking. I'm like, whatever. This is like, you're jumping me. I'm kicking. And, and on top of that, it's a really unfair. You're way older than me. Anyway, so that's totally off topic. Sorry about that, guys. But anyway, so that's, that's how it actually happened. So yeah, it's totally believable that I got on these street fights. If you understand the history of how it happened. Um, it wasn't like I went out and gotten 200, you know, bar fights or something like that. You know, I wasn't a dickhead. Um, anyway, so, um, that's, that's that anyway. So it's, it's, it's really for a really good cause. I hope stops bully. So all you have to do is just, um, leave comments when new videos come out. You don't, you don't have to care about it. All you have to do is care about stopping bullies, care about the, the point of the, of the channel, which is to help stop bullies. And it will help stop bullies. Trust me, because I'm coming up with other videos too about about the psychology of how to stop a bully and how to get how to talk people out of a fight. That's the first premise of, of, of street jitsu is to, to not get in the street fight in the first place and to do everything you can to talk the guy down to learn how to lower your ego. And then lastly, if you guys really want to show your appreciation, you can go and start leaving some comments and check out some of my uh, nominees and videos. And the easiest way to access those videos is either go to my you know hit profile cheaply and that's where you see the street jitsu channel and also the nominees channel now. Um, but also you can just go to nomicism.com. So that's another way to do that. And if you go to nomicism.com, there's videos in there. And I have like four videos there right now as of this video, but I'll be putting more out. As a matter of fact, I'm recording one right after this about dreams, lucid dreams, how to lucid dream, which is how to control your own dreams and become aware that you're dreaming while you're dreaming. So you can like make Jessica Alba appear and like have sex with her because you can totally control the dream or shoot fireballs in your hand or fly around like Superman. Like you can gain that level of experience within lucid dreams when you learn how to lucid, how to lucid dream. It does take a lot of dedication, um, but the techniques work. And so it's awesome. Having lucid dreams is a great thing. Uh, 
but uh, really draining. It feels like you don't get to do it every single day. It starts feeling like you don't get sleep. You won't be probably won't be successful every day anyway. Um, then I'm explaining what dreams are, um, exactly what I've learned that dreams are, which is totally bizarre and crazy, but it's what I learned. Uh, and then definitely check out my theory of everything on, on that. If you haven't already seen that video, I have it on that on the site and on the on the YouTube channel, the Nomicism YouTube channel. Anyway, the whole point of that is that it the the point of Nomicism is to teach people how to properly meditate so that they can build themselves up, overcome their own fears, overcome negative emotions, overcome addictions, um, you know, learn how to overcome their nightmares, to control their dreams, all this kind of stuff. So Nomicism is not about religious views or, or believing in my philosophy. In fact, I say, don't believe what I believe, um, you know, and so anyway, and then and also, you know, goes in reincarnation and things like that are part of, part of the system, which is a natural reincarnation, not a supernatural one, which is kind of cool. But uh, yeah, so you might want to read about it. The homepage there kind of gives a brief understanding of what Namicism is, what it's about. Um, but specifically, the very first paragraph says, we are not here to change your beliefs. It's not about a belief system. Believe whatever you want. And Namicism doesn't try to change that belief system. It just simply has a collection of knowledge of, of my beliefs that I, I've gained, and I don't want people to believe in them. But it teaches how you can, not yet, that those videos are, are to come but it will teach you how you can achieve your own, your own awareness, your awakening, and how different guided meditations will help you overcome like addictions and things like that and, and, and overcome your fears and all that kind of thing. So it's a really good cause. It's not, it's not a religion. It's not trying to convert people to believe a certain belief system. Quite the opposite. Believe what you, be where you're, be where you're at. You need to be where you're at. Believe what you want to believe, but meditation can totally help you. And it teaches you my personal Form meditation. Grew up in a household that did not meditate, did not teach how to meditate, didn't talk about meditation. They were all like, no one that I knew talked about. I didn't know what meditation was. Matter of fact, when I was doing it, I didn't even know it was called meditation. I just woke up one day and knew how to do this thing that I later learned was called meditation. But it's a very not very different, but it's different than a lot of meditations I've tried after that. The ones I learned what meditation was is different than Zen Buddhist meditation and other meditations you heard about. It's more like almost like self help, self self hypnosis. But I'm telling you, it works fantastic. And for those that aren't very good at it yet, um, as you get better and better at it, that's why I'm gonna have a few guided meditation videos on there that like guide you through certain points. Like one guided meditation will be how to overcome your fears. You know, another one will be to overcome your addiction. Another one will be to you know um, overcome your negative emotions. Another one will be to become more confident and, and happy about yourself and life and and stuff like that. So anyway, all right. Thanks for watching. I talked way too long off topic, but. Uh, and that's why I say we're going to end of the videos because I figured only the Dyer fans are going to watch the end. And you guys are probably not the selfish type and will, will most likely help me out because I've given so much free information. I'm not saying you have to give something back in return. I'm not that kind of person. You know, I just give freely. You don't have to do nothing in return. I'm just saying if you want to, then that's awesome. And I appreciate it. So, double peace. Time to walk. Time to do some video on dreams and stuff. Yeah. All right, the beanie, it's kind of cold in my house right now, honestly, um, and my hair, look how long it's getting, it's getting crazy, it's just like, that's just too long, I need to go get a haircut, but, uh, and a freaking tall forehead, can't be digging that, that's why I usually, you know, style it, kind of like go like boom, 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 like that, and then kind of like style it like this, but then I'm like looking too emo, and then I got like a you go spot right there, you can see my forehead because I didn't comb it right. And anyway, so my hair is just a mess and uh, getting too long. So, not that it looks like horrible, I guess, but uh, I don't really care for it right now. So, being your hat, that's the way it goes. But I definitely gotta go get a haircut. <laughs> All right, so, why did I show you guys that? <laughs> Fucking weird. All right.